Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Farjana. Welcome to my another complete tutorial. Today, I will show you how to make a WordPress website from scratch using Elementor Pro. This will be a complete and step-by-step -step tutorial. Here, I will try to cover from very basic to advanced level. So, if you have no experience about WordPress or how to make a website, you can also make your own amazing website by following this step-by-step -step tutorial. Before moving forward, let me introduce myself. I am Farjana Roshit, professional web designer and developer and I am working in this area for last 8 years. So, you are learning from a real web developer. Now, let's have a look which you are going to make in today's video. This is the website which you are going to make in today's tutorial. For this website, I have already designed a home page into Figma and by following this design i have created the whole website i will show you how you can create this kind of gradient text effect and also how to create this kind of nice mouse over effect and now if i scroll down i will show you how you can create this kind of featured box then here is a normal about section i will show you how you can create this kind of section from scratch and then here is service area you can add your own services in a clean simple way then here is some work or portfolio you can add your portfolio or latest work then here is some logos for your customers i will show you how you can create custom header and footer and also how you can make our header fully sticky when you scroll down i will show you how you can create others inner pages following our main home page design here i will create about us page service page case studies blog page and contact page i will show you how you can create this kind of blog page and also how to create different kind of layout for single blog post like this page is coming from a specific category post and also this is another blog post for a different category also we'll show you how you can create a custom design for our blog post category and how you can use any dynamic text or dynamic image inside our category and single blog post page in this tutorial i will also explain some more advanced and cool feature of elementor pro and finally i'll show you how you can create any custom design pop-up with different kind of trigger action all right so far you see if you think this tutorial adds some value to you please give this video a big thumbs up otherwise you may not find this kind of valuable tutorial next time and if you are new here like to see my more upcoming videos don't forget to subscribe my channel and you will find a timestamp in my description so you can jump any specific part you need all right i have divided this tutorial into five simple steps i will show you how you can get your own domain and hosting and here i will show you how you can get your domain completely free for the first year and how you can get 60 percent discount through my link then i will show you how to install wordpress then i will show you how to install wordpress theme how to install and activate Elementor Pro and finally I will start designing our amazing website from scratch now go ahead for the first step getting our domain and hosting so if you have already your domain and hosting you can skip this part or if you don't have then follow along so to get domain and hosting just go to farjana .com. And here go to tools and here is web hosting here is Bluehost web hosting link so now click on get started so why Bluehost in my opinion Bluehost is the best web hosting provider I am a web developer I tried so many web hosting companies I don't want to mention their name but I personally ended up using Bluehost hundreds of my clients using Bluehost and they never complain about using it if you see my Bluehost account I have hosted here tons of websites and I never get a downtime their customer support is really amazing in case if you need any help and that's why I always recommend Bluehost and their price is really affordable for everyone now click on get started you can see their pricing 
so you have different options based on what you need if it's your first website and you only want to host one website then you can take their basic plan and if you have multiple websites more than one you can pick their plus or choice plus options though both options are almost same choice plus options have domain privacy plus protection and site backup options but we don't necessarily need that and you can take their pro plans if you are planning to host a big e-commerce website and if you have millions of visitors already as a beginner let's start with the basic plan it will cost only three dollar 95 cent per month and you will get one website 50 gb ssd storage unmetered bandwidth free ssl certificate standard performance one included domain five part domains and 25 subdomains and in this price it's awesome but in future if you have multiple websites you can upgrade it to your plus plan so basically we can upgrade or downgrade our plan anytime now let's click on select now if you have domain name already you can type your domain name here and configure it I'm assuming you don't have a domain name already so let's select a domain name from here on the right side you see there are several options .com, .online, .site, .website and so many options but I always suggest to take .com website because it's good for search engine optimization and also .com website looks more professional and legit. So here I am selecting a domain name for this tutorial purpose. So I am typing here Farjana WP. So my domain name will be Farjana WP.com and I am clicking to next. So here is showing the domain name Farjana WP.com is available awesome now i need to put my account information here so here i'm typing my first name last name my business name and selecting my country and here is my state address city postal code and he, typing my phone number and email address and here the email address is really important so make sure you are putting your best email address because after completing purchase a receipt will send to that email address now here is the package information by default it's selected for 33 months that means for three years and if you now see the price is showing three dollar ninety five cent per month but we can reduce this price here we only take the necessary things for starting we can take it for one year that means for 12 months and it will cost five dollar ninety five cents per month it's still pretty cheap so now we can see the total price $71.40 for a whole year. That's awesome. And here I will show you a secret tip how you can reduce this price more. So now I'm going to hover outside of this page. So when I'm going to hover on back button or outside of this page, here we will see a pop-up window which will offering you last price $2.65 per month. Now click on claim savings and now you can see the price $2.65 per month when 3 years selected. So now I am going to select 12 months price again and here you can see the total price now showing $59.40 for a whole year. It's amazing. Now I'm going to package extras and here 
you can see domain privacy price protection which is adding more prices here so you can select or deselect domain privacy having domain privacy is good no one can get to know who is the owner of the website but i'm deselecting it because i want to be transparent and it's not that important to me at this moment i'm also turning off site lot security and code guard basic i don't need site lot security and code guard basic either so i'm deselecting those as well so now you can see the total price is now 59 dollar 40 cent for a whole year now here i'm putting my payment information so here i'm typing my credit card number and here i'm putting my cvb code and expiration date and now also select this check icon so you are agreed with the terms and policy and when you complete purchasing through my link you see you are getting a huge discount and i will also get a commission so nothing extra that's a win-win situation thank you for that because it supports this channel and help me to make more valuable videos like this for you so now click on submit okay so now you can see your purchase was a success we sent a confirmation email to dvhealth at gmail.com now i'm going to check my email so here i got an email here so here is the verification email for my purchase i'm going to check it and verify my email so now my email is verified successfully and next i will get uh, another email here is my payment confirmation and and here bluehost sent me an invoice for my purchase now from here we have to create a account here is my domain name and here i have to type a password i'm typing my password and retype it checking on their privacy policy and create account okay now save it so your account is ready to go you can log in so now i'm going to log in here i need to type my password which i already created now and log in i'm saving it for now i'm skip it because i will do it later with you in step by step i'm clicking on get started turning off domain privacy and protection and confirm it so we have successfully completed purchasing our domain and hosting so we have purchased our domain and hosting now going to install wordpress to install wordpress go to my sites and from here we are going to create size and then site name so here we can type wordpress website and site title we can type complete tutorial by farjana and next here is a advanced option so by default if we don't fill all this field so it will take the default email address from this bluehost account and default username and it will generate a auto password so now i like to set all this by manually so i'm typing my email address then username and password so there should be one uppercase and one number okay so now click on next and here is the domain name so our wordpress is going to install here and here is subdirectory so if we want to install our wordpress in a subfolder or subdirectory location then we can type here some name or our folder name but here i want to install our wordpress in root domain so for this i am just leaving it and going to next it's taking some moment to install it our wordpress installed successfully 
congratulations so here is our website url and here is our admin url here is our username and password now i'm going to log in wordpress yes congratulations we have successfully installed our wordpress and this is our wordpress dashboard and when you click on visit website this is our wordpress website here default wordpress theme is installed by default so from here i'm just leaving all these which i don't need here i'm just crossing these are coming from our plugin settings so for this i'm going to plugins and selecting all plugins first i'm going to deactivate which are activate here and now selecting all and going to delete and apply okay so i'm deleting all plugins which i don't need here actually i want to build this website from clean state and going to start from scratch then i'm going to post i'm just deleting this default post selecting it move to trash and apply and next going to trash and empty trash next going to pages and similar way selecting all pages going to move trash and apply now going to trash and empty trash and next here i'm going to settings and going to reading so from here i'm just discourage search engine from indexing this site so for the first time as i am building this website and i'm not ready to go indexing my website from all search engines so for this time i'm just disabling this website from search engine indexing so it will not index by google or any other search engine until i'm going to live my website so now i'm going to make save changes so when our website is done and we're going to ready to live and we are going to do some seo works then we can make it deselect for this time i'm just checking it and next i'm going to permalink so the permalink is the page url so if we want to create a new page or new post it will show the page url in this way or for example here is the best way to show our website url so this is our website url and then if we post any new item like how to make a wordpress website then our post url should be our main domain url slash how to make a wordpress website slash so it will be user friendly and it will be seo friendly so i am selecting this one and going to save changes and next i am going to appearance now going to install wordpress theme so here you can see this all are default theme of wordpress so now if we just go to the visit site we can see it's looking like this and now if we just uh, activate another one like 2020 and now if we go to visit website so this is a completely different look from the previous one and now for this tutorial i'm going to install a new theme so for that i'm going to add new and here i am searching for astra and this is the theme we are going to install so first click on install then activate and now if we refresh the website just crossing the others we can see this website looks is completely changed now i'm going to install our elementor plugin so going to plugins and add new and here searching for elementor and here is the elementor website builder i'm going to install this one first and going to activate now i'm going to install elementor pro to get elementor pro now i'm going here going to farjana and then going to tools 
and scroll down from here click on Elementor Pro get started and here we can see several kind of packages they are offering for Elementor Pro here is main two types of package one is for individuals and another for team so if you are individual and want to make a website for your own you can select any package from these three so here is three kind of packages one is for one website and another is for three website and the third one is for 25 website and for these three packages you will get same number of features so all these features will be same for these three item only difference is the website number so if you have one website you can take this one and if you have three website you can select this one and if you have more than three so that case you can select this one and if you have a team or if you have a business and you work for tons of clients that case you can go for teams packages here is two type of package one is studio and another is agency so for the studio they are charging 499 per year and another one is 999 per year this looks comparatively expensive but this is not if you work for 100 website that means you are working for 100 clients and if you charge each of your client a minimum amount per year or per month for maintenance purpose for example if you charge only 100 per year for each client and you have around 100 website so let's calculate you can charge 10,000 per year from 100 clients and comparing this price 499 is really really affordable and also the same calculation we can do for this one and obviously when you go for any pro version you will get a best quality service and you will get all kind of pro features okay so if you now want to buy any of these for example this one just click on this buy now button and then simply fill all this field with your information and also here is credit card or paypal information then check out i already purchased the expert one so i'm not going to buy a new package for this time so now i'm going to log in to my account now i'm going to here and from here we will find the elementor pro plugin so click here to download then i am going to plugin and add new plugin now going to upload plugin and browse okay so here is the elementor pro we have downloaded then install now then activate then here is connect and activate option then we have to activate it okay so our Elementor Pro is now activated now I'm going to start designing our website from scratch so going to page and add new first I'm going to create the home page and publish and now going to edit with Elementor and here we can create our page from scratch and also if I go here we can see here is different kind of pre-made layout so we can select any layout from here and also here is some blocks so we can also import different sections for our page design for now I'm going with the first one and here I have already designed a layout with this Figma and now I'm going to convert this design to our home page if I zoom in this design going to the very top area let's go ahead with the first section I'm crossing it and here 
for the first section here we can take a one column structure and for the second area we need to take a three column structure so first I'm taking a one column structure and here I'm selecting the background color so for that going to edit section going to style tab and background type color I'm taking this black color so if I click here here you can see the color for this background 111 I'm taking this color and also saving this color so I'm saving it to black 1 or black BG1 and create and now for this section first I'm taking this text I'm going to copy this text and here I'm going to click on this nine dots icon and taking the heading and paste the text here and changing the text to h1 or we can keep it to h2 and alignment to center and also the text transform so going to style tab and typography text transform making it to uppercase and if I check the font, here is the Poppins bold and 70. I'm making it the font to Poppins. And font size 70, font weight to bold. And for this section, we can add some padding in left and right. So going to padding, making it to unlink. And for top and bottom, we can add 50. Or 150 and for left and right I'm adding 80 or 100 all right so for left and right I have set it to 130 and now finally I need to change the color for this text so here I have added a gradient color for font I have created another tutorial before how we can set the gradient text color so i will leave also this page link in my description so you can get it from there and here if i scroll down you can see here is some css code so i'm going to copy all this code and going to my page going to heading text and from advanced tab if i scroll down and custom css i'm going to paste it and now if I go to the style tab and the text color from here I'm selecting the color to transparent and now we can see our color is showing and again going to advanced tab from CSS here I have used three color so now I'm going to change the color so going again here going to Figma and if I go here for the linear you can set three color like this for the first one this is the color I'm going to copy the first one and going to copy the second one and the third one all right so we are done and now going to do some finishing touch so line height is okay and here we can decrease the padding for this section so again going to this section from advance sorry not from here i have to go to the title and from here for top we can keep it 150 and for bottom we can set it to 120 or for bottom we can set it to 100 and for the font size you can also try to smaller like here i'm trying to 65 and for the line height i'm setting 1.2 em and now i'm going to create these three sections so here we can take a different section or here we can take a inner column so going again here and next again going to the six dot icon and here is the inner section and here first i'm going to the 
text and icon for the first one so going here going to copy the text again taking the heading text changing the alignment to center and going to style tab changing the color you can change the color to white and the typography making it to poppins and text transform to uppercase font weight making it to okay from here if i check font size 24 semi bold all right so this is okay and next i'm going to add some dummy text for details and making the alignment to center so going to style tab alignment center and the color i'm making it to white i'm going to typography and changing the font family as it is to poppins and font size making it to 18 font weight normal and line height i'm setting 1.4 or 1.5 and now in the top of this text going to add a icon so going here and going to change the icon and also changing the color I'm changing this color to this red color and also saving this color to red and now we can also decrease the spacing between each item so going to edit column and going to layout widgets spacing i'm making it to 5 or 10 yeah looks good and finally for this column we can add some background and padding so if i go here for this section i'm changing the background color going to edit column style tab and for background i'm going to add this color and here we need to add some border radius I'm going to add some border radius adding 15 pixel and also going to add some padding so going to advance and for padding adding 20 pixel or 30 making it to unlink and for bottom for left and right I'm adding 40 or and now going to copy the column and paste it here and also going to paste it again and going to remove the empty one and now finally going to add some margins between these two and between these two so for the second one or for the first one from advance i'm going to add some margin right so making it to unlink and on the right side i'm adding 10 pixel going to copy for the second one paste style and for the second one also going to advance and for left i'm going to add 10 pixel and for the third one from advance from mar for margin for left side i'm adding 10 pixel all right so looks good now and finally for this section we can add some padding in bottom area so going to edit section from advance for padding making it to unlink and for bottom we can add 120 or we can try with 50 yeah looks good if i check the full screen mode so
so it's looking like this and here we can also remove some text and now if I check so it's looking like this so our top area is done and now going for the second section so for this section first I'm going to export this image and now selecting these two image pressing shift and command G I'm making it as a group and now from the right side going to export and selecting as PNG and export group 1 here is our image I'm changing the name to about us and now again going to my website and here I'm taking a two column structure for the left side I'm taking a image and going to upload this image and for this section I'm also changing the background color so going again here if I check the background color this is 2 to 2 so going to edit section going to style tab and background color I'm changing the color to 2 to 2 and saving this color to black bg2 and also adding some padding in top and bottom going to advance and for padding making it to unlink and for top adding 70 and for bottom 70 or I am adding 80 for top and bottom and for the right side I am going here and going to copy all this text here I am taking the heading text changing the font text and now going to style tab changing the color to white and typography making the font family to poppins font size 60 or here we can decrease the font size and line height I'm making it to 1.2 em and now I'm going to copy others text and this time we can make duplicate this text and I'm moving it to the bottom so we need not to change the text style one more time and now I'm changing the text making the alignment to left from a style tab all right so this is done and now we have to create this button and the text of this top area going to copy this text you can copy this text and paste it here I'm moving it to the top and changing the text to about us alignment to left and now going to style tab and typography we can make the size to 18 and text transform to default and for this text I'm going to add funds for padding making it to link mode and making all to zero and here you can see it's taking the full width so it's not getting the gradient color our gradient color is now placing the all over width so for that I'm going to the positioning and width I'm making it to in line and now we can see our gradient color is working and finally I'm going to create this button read more button so again going here and searching for this button 
I am taking it and here changing the text to read more and here we can add the link URL and now going to the style tab first changing the typography font family to poppins font size 18 or we can decrease it text transform uppercase and letter spacing one pixel and for this button we can change the background color i'm making it to transparent and adding some border color border type solid and width two pixel or we can set to one pixel and border radius i'm adding 50 so now it's looking similar and here we can add some padding in left and right making it to unlink for top and bottom I'm adding 20 or 15 or I'm adding 10 pixel for top and bottom and for left and right adding 30 all right looks good and finally if we check again and here if we want to add the spacing between these two we can also do that so going to edit section going to layout and column gap we can make it to extended or we can make it to wider all right and now if i check so it's looking good so this section is done and now I'm going to check the responsive view for these two section. For that, if I go to the left side in bottom corner, here is a button for responsive mode. And now going to the tablet. So for tablet, it's looking like this. We can improve the layout for the tablet. So going to this text area, going to advance and for padding, we can set 70 and it looks good and also we can decrease the font size so going to a style tab and from here we can set the font size to 55 yeah looks good for tablet and also for this one we can change the font size I'm making it to 20 and also for this one going to a style tab and we can change the font size to 14 yeah looks good and for this column again going here from advanced for top and bottom i'm adding 25 and it's work for all side so we can keep it and now going to copy the title and paste the style for these two and also for this text and for this column from advance we can remove the margin for all side and for the second section in the similar way we can change the font size going to typography and font i'm making it to 35 and also for this one we can set it to 14 and also for this button typography we can change the font size to 12 and we can also customize the button padding so going here for top we can set the 10 making it to unlink and for right side i'm adding 30 or 25 all right looks good and now going to the phone view so going to top area and here 
going to this text going to advance and for padding we can make it to 20 making it to unlink for top I'm adding 50 or 80 and for bottom we can add 50 and for left and right 15 pixel and also changing the font size 35 yeah looks good and also for this one we can keep it like this and here we can remove the margin for this column so going here from margin right side I'm making it to 0 and for bottom we can add this 10 pixel making it to unlink and for bottom 10 and also for this one for bottom 10 and the third one making it to 0 for all all right looks good for phone and also for this section this image and all this looking good and for section padding if I go here from advance you can set it to 50 and first making it to unlink for top 50 and bottom 50 yeah looks good and finally save our page again going to the desktop view so this two section is done and next I'm going to design the service area and also rest of the section now going for the service area so for this section first we need to take a one column structure then three column structure so going again here and now taking a new section one column structure and for this section I'm going to copy the style from this section and going here and paste the style and for this section I'm taking a different color for background if I check here is the background color 111 so I'm going here and style tab and the color this is black bg2 I'm taking black bg1 and now I have to take the title and the small title so going to copy the title and paste it here and also going to copy this text and paste it here moving it to the top and here I'm making the alignment to center but here I have set the width to auto so to making it to the center we need to add margin auto and here if we go to the advance we can see here we cannot type auto so I'm going to add this using custom CSS so going here going to custom CSS and now if I scroll down in the very bottom I'm typing selector and now type margin auto and now we can see it's moving to the center line and also in the similar way for this text I'm making it to center and now going to copy text from here so going here first selecting this text and copy paste and also for the next one and here if we see we can make it to the two line the line break is not working here we can add some padding for the left and right so going to advance and from padding making it to unlink and for the right side I am adding 150 and left side 150 and next here here is some text so for that I can copy this text first so we need not to do the text style paste it here and now going to copy this text going here and paste it and now making the center alignment 
and also for this text we can add some padding so going here in the similar way going to add fonts and for padding making it to unlink for left and right adding 150 or here I have set it to 170 and next for this section we can duplicate the boxes from the very top so going here and we can copy the inner section and now we can paste it here and now we can change our text and icon so for the first one web design I'm changing the text and also the icon so these are all dummy icon and text you can use your own text and own icon so I'm going to add our own text one by one and now we can also duplicate this one and here we need to add some margin for this top one so going here and going to add fonts and for the margin making it to unlink and for bottom we can add 20 yeah looks good and now in the similar way I'm going to add our own text alright so now in the top area here we can also decrease the spacing between each item so going to the edit column and from layout you can make the widgets spacing to 10 yeah looks good and also for this inner section we can add some spacing in top so from advanced we can add 30 pixel looks good and finally if i check the responsive view for this section going to the tablet and here we can decrease the margin in bottom for this inner section going here from advanced we can add 10 pixel and also for this text is okay and here we can also decrease some padding for the left and right this text from the advanced for padding making it to unlink i'm making it to 140 and for the top one is okay and also checking the phone view for this section going here from advanced making padding to zero and also for this one making padding to zero looks good all right so this section is done and again going back to the desktop view and next if i go here again so here is the portfolio or work section so for this section we can duplicate this section first i'm going to duplicate and now for this section i'm changing the background to the opposite one and going to style tab from color i'm selecting black bg2 and here i'm changing the text one by one case studies going here and adding our text and now for this section i'm removing the bottom one and now for the first one i'm removing the icon and here we can copy this text and paste it here and now for this column going here and for the background this time i'm going to add the image and some overlay so now i'm going to export this image so selecting these two image in the same time and now this two layer i'm making it to the group by command g and now from the right side export and this time we can set it to as jpg format and now going to export and also going to export this two image in the similar way and now going to this column area and here i'm going to upload the image as background so going to style tab and now for background i'm going to upload this image selecting the first one and now for this section i'm going to add some padding in top so going to advance for padding for padding top i'm adding 220 and for bottom we can add 30 pixel looks good 
and for left and right this time we can add 15 pixel and for top if we want to change the height or we can add more spacing so I'm going to increase the padding all right so I have add 260 and in the similar way we're going to copy the column style and paste style and also paste style and deleting this one and now for the others one I am going to remove the icons and for the text we can copy the text I'm removing the extra one so all is looking good now and now for the second one I'm changing the image so in the similar way and also for the third one and now we can also modify the margins for the columns so for the last column from advance we can set the right side margin to zero and also if I check the tablet view so it's looking like this and here we need to work for the padding for tablet and phone so for the right side and left side I'm adding 10 pixel making it to unlink and for top I'm adding 250 and for bottom 20 or here we can add 200 yeah it looks good and doing same for the all others and finally going for the phone view for the phone view it looks good now going back to the desktop again and now if I check again so here we need to add a button so for that again going here I have already created a button in the about section so we can use this button I'm going to copy and paste it here and this time I'm changing the alignment to center and also changing the text to view all and we are done and next for the client's logo area I'm going to do in the similar way I'm going to duplicate this section first and now I'm changing the background color to the opposite one from color I'm making it to the black BG one and this time I'm removing this inner section and also here we need not to use this button and the text so I'm removing this text and also removing this button and here I'm going to add this logo so first I'm going to export this logo selecting the first one and from the right side export and this time I'm going to export as PNG and also going to export all others and now for this section here I'm taking a image gallery so going here and searching for image here is the image carousel we can also take this or we can use this basic gallery and from here I'm going to upload the images I'm going to upload all the logo image and going to create a new gallery insert gallery and now for the column if I check here three four five so we can make it to the five column and now the image size we can make the image size to default and going to style tab and here going to image spacing custom so now I'm going to add some spacing between this logo and here you can see if we check the design here you can see the alignment is center and also when you use the four logo it's in the center line so here I'm not finding the alignment center for logo we can do the same thing in a little bit different way 
so now I'm going to duplicate this one and for the first item I'm going to remove this four going here and if I go here I'm removing this four and for the second one I'm going to remove this five and insert and now for the second one i'm going to add some margin in left and right so going here going to advance and for margin making it to unlink and for left and right i'm going to add some margin 150 and 150 and here we can set the column so going to content and column i'm making it to four and also we can decrease the margin now all right so i have set it to 100 for left and right and also we need to add some margin in top so for top i'm adding 20 or 30 yeah looks good and also for the first one going to add funds and here i'm going to add some margin in top making it to unlink and for top i'm adding 50 yeah looks good and now for this section if i check the responsive view going to tablet it's looking like this for tablet looking good and for tablet we can decrease the margin for the second item so going here making it to unlink and here i'm adding 80 for left and right and for top i'm adding 20 or 10 yeah looks good and also going to the phone view for phone it's showing one by one you can keep it like that and now for the second item going here and from advance we can set the margin to zero and here going to add some margin in top only so for top making it to unlink first and for top adding 20 or 30 all right so i have added 40 and looks good for phone also and now finally going to the desktop view so we are done for this section and finally i need to go for the footer area and header area for header area first i'm going to export our logo I'm going to export export as png and now going to upload our logo going to view page from a new tab and now going to customize going here site identity and here is the site title and logo going to upload skip cropping and from here display site title making it off and also from here if i scroll down here is option site icon so we can also upload our site icon from here and the icon which is showing in this browser it will be changed so i'm going to upload this icon only so this time i'm selecting these two icon and now export these two shape and now going to site icon and going to upload this one So now you can see our small icon is changed and finally save it and next I'm going to create our menu I'm crossing it and now from the top area here you can see here is the menu and from here first I'm going to create a menu I'm typing the name to main menu and now create menu and from here I'm selecting the home first then for others pages i'm going to create some custom link so for others pages like about service pricing case study blog and contact for example i'm creating the about page and i'm just typing a hashtag and add to menu and when we will create our pages we can change this link and save menu or here we can do another thing like we can create others pages as blank page then we can link all these pages 
from here so first I'm going to pages and creating others pages first I'm going to add new and type about and publish I'm going to dashboard again and creating others pages in the similar way all right so our page is created and now before creating our menus I'm setting our home page as default front page so for that again going to the settings and reading and from here going to a static page and for home page I'm selecting the home and save changes now again going to the menu so going to appearance and from here going to menu and now we can see all the pages is showing here if I go to the view wall and here is all pages we can select all page and add to menu and also I'm removing this custom link about and also we can remove the another home so now it's home about and all these pages we can reorganize the page link so after home this will be about then we can move the service then pricing case studies blog and contact and now from here we can set the display location by default we can set the primary location and save menu now if we refresh our page we can see our menu is showing but here I'm going to designing our header area from the theme builder so again going here and going to templates and going to theme builder and from here I'm going to the header then add new header so the template type this will be header and the name of the template we can type anything here so I'm typing header and create template and from here we will find some pre-made layout for our header area so if you want to start from any template we can select any one then we can customize it for example if we check it we can see here is a nice gradient background and the menu and on the right side the phone number and on the left side the logo and again if I go to the back to library so here we will find many pre-made header area this time I'm going to start from scratch so I'm going to cross it and now from here going to add new section and this time from design we need to create a three column structure so I'm taking this one and now for the left side I'm going to add our logo so going to plus and site logo and for this whole section first I'm taking the background color to this black color so going to edit section style tab and background type color I'm selecting the color to BG1 or if we check here yeah 111 and now in the center we can add our menu taking this nav menu and now we can change the text style we can keep these lines on hover or we can remove it for now I'm keeping it and going to style tab I'm changing the color to white and the typography the font family making it to pop in and the font size 15 text transform to uppercase and font weight we can make it to 400 or here you can decrease the size and adding some letter spacing one pixel and from header I think we can remove one or two menu item now I'm going to complete the design first and for this hover icon I'm going to hover and text color we can make it to the red color and also the pointer color we can make it to the red and pointer width I'm making it to one pixel and if I go to the active we can make it as it is and on the right side I'm going to add a button so button for get started click on the plus icon and I'm taking a button so searching for button and I'm taking this one and here text I'm typing get started and the alignment making it to the right side 
you can add any page link with this get started or you can add the contact page link with this one and now if i check the design so the background color will be red it will be rounded and the text will be white so now i'm going to the style tab and the color i'm making it to the red and the text color is okay border radius i'm making it to 50 so now it's rounded and also for the text here is the typography i'm changing the font family to poppins and the text transform to uppercase font size i'm making it to 14 and letter spacing adding one pixel letter spacing and font weight 500 by default we can try the 400 yeah 500 is good all right so button looks good and now i'm going to publish and add condition so by default it's showing the entire website it will work for all over the website and i'm going to save and close now if i go to our page so from here going to view page so you can see our header area is showing like this and now from the menu we can remove one item so for that again i'm going to my dashboard and going to appearance and menu we can remove the pricing for now and now if i save it and check it so it's showing like this and now i'm going to set the alignment to the right side so again going here going to templates and theme builder going to edit with elementor and now going to the menu setting the alignment to the right and now save it and now if i refresh yeah looks good and now for the overall head idea we can add some spacing or padding in top and bottom so for that from the builder going to edit section from advanced padding we can make it to unlink and for top i'm adding 50 or 15 pixel top and bottom and here we can increase the logo width and also we can set the vertical align center for all column so going here and vertical align making it to middle yeah all is good and finally going to save it now if i refresh so now it's looking like this and now i'm going to design the footer area again so in the similar way i'm going to the dashboard from templates going to theme builder and going to footer going to add new footer and here is the template type footer and name of the template will be we can set anything like footer and create template and here in the similar way we can take any pre-made layout for footer and this time i'm going with a layout so we can check this one and now going to insert so here is our footer area and now i'm going to customize our footer using our design so first going to change the background color from edit section going to style tab and changing this color to black bg1 or from the design it will be 000 and here is our logo i'm moving it to the left and also going to increase the logo size so going to change the width and also here will be text i'm changing the text color and now this will be link title i'm changing the font style to uppercase making the text transform to uppercase and some little spacing one pixel and also going to copy style and paste style and the last one this will be contact information or contacts and here if i check here will be some list so this is icon list widgets we can add our own text and here will be link for now i'm just leaving as it is and i'm changing the text color from the text text color i'm changing this color and also same for the others one copy and paste style 
and here I'm going to decrease the width for the first one and also for the second one and third one and for the first one changing it to contact information and here I'm going to add some contact information like from the design I'm going to add all this and here I'm making the font to bold using the B tag and now doing the same for the others and finally going to add the social on the right side so moving it to the right and now changing the icon background so going here going to style tab and primary color we can make it to fully transparent and on hover we can keep it like this or if i go to the icon hover so i'm changing this icon color to white on hover or you can make it to the black yeah looks good and here if i go to the advanced tab here i'm going to decrease the top padding to zero all right and finally going to remove the footer section and now going to publish going to add condition and enter site making it save and close and now if i refresh our page and if i scroll down we can see here is showing our footer and finally i'm going to check the responsive view going to tablet it's looking good on phone and also for the phone we can increase the logo size and for this area going to the third column and content width i'm making it to 100 and also here we can increase the social icon size so going to style tab and icon size i'm making it to 14 and also going to add some margin in top so going to advance and margin top making it to 20 sorry not from here i'm going to the title from advance and for margin making it to unlink and for top adding 20 and now for this two column going here from layout making it to 50 and also another one 50 looks good for phone and again going to the tablet so here we can decrease the font size I'm making it to 12 or 14 and now going to copy the style paste style paste style and here you can also increase the icon size so going to style tab and size i'm making it to 14 all right looks good and now again going to the desktop and finally save it and now also going to check the responsive view for the header so again going to exit to dashboard going to theme builder for header going to edit with elementor and now going to responsive mode going to tablet so it's looking like this i'm going to increase the column size for logo i'm making it to 50 or 30 and for the logo making the alignment to left and for the menu i'm changing the alignment so for the mobile menu here is the toggle align i'm making it to the right and also changing the color going to style tab and if i scroll down here is the toggle button i'm changing the color to white and for the button we can set the button width to 20 or we can increase it i'm making it to 30 and for menu icon i'm changing the width i made it 40 and finally when i click on the menu icon so it's showing like this so for that again going to the content and now for mobile drop down here is the align i'm making it to center or we can set it to the align and full width i'm making it on so now it will show like this and we can also change the background color for the mobile menu so going to advance and here is the drop down it will work for sub menu or for the mobile menu so now for the background color i'm changing the color to black 
and the text color I'm making it to white and also on hover so if I go to the hover and background color I'm changing it to the BG2 and also for the second column I'm making it to the vertical align to middle so now it's looking like this so for tablet looking good and finally going for the mobile view for mobile view the menu looking good and also I'm going to change the width for the logo so going here and style tab and width I'm making it to 70% or we can make it to the 100% and for the column I'm making the column width to 70 and for the menu I'm making the column width to 30 all right looks good and finally I'm saving it again going back to the desktop and going to refresh our page so our header and footer area is done and finally I'm going to add a sticky header so when you scroll down you can see a sticky header for that again I'm going to the header area now again going to edit section and from here height we can set a mean height for example here I am setting 90 pixel and column position by default we can keep it as middle and then going to advance and for margin first making it to unlink and for bottom making it to minus 90 and also going to add a CSS ID name so I have already listed all this class and ID name and some CSS code to my website so I will also leave this page link in my description so you can check it from there now going to copy this ID name we have to use this same ID name for header section and then going to motion effect and from here sticky going to make it to top and sticky on we can set only for the desktop for tablet and mobile I'm making it off and effects offset i'm making it to the same height so making it to the 90 and now finally going to the custom css and from here i'm going to copy all this css code from here and paste it and also we need to add a css class name for our logo so going to copy and now going to logo from advanced setting this CSS class name and finally save it now if I refresh our website so by default it's looking like this and when I scroll down you can see the sticky header is working and here if we look on the CSS code so going to edit section again and from custom CSS here we need not to worry about all this code but here I have set some variable which we can change easily from here for example the header height on a scroll I make the height to 70 pixel you can change it from here then opacity I set it 0.90 then shrink me so on a sticky header it's shrinking then the default state so this is the transition time for this shrinking effect then the background color I have set the black and the opacity 0.8 and finally the transition time and also the transition style so we can change all this from here and also if you know CSS code you can customize all this code from here alright so our sticky header is done and now going to design others pages one by one and now I'm going to create our about page so going to about page and for the home page I'm going to open this page in the elementor builder and now if I check the about page so by default it's looking like this and now I'm also going to open the about page with the elementor so first time it's not opening so I'm going to edit page and now going to edit with elementor and also going to the home page and from here I'm going to save the whole about page sorry the whole home page as the template so for that 
from here save options save as template and saving this page as home and now going to save so now our home page is saved as template and now if i again going to the about page and again refreshing it now going to click on the add template and going to my templates and from here i'm going to insert the home page and now for this inner page first i am removing some extra sections for example i'm removing this also don't need this work area removing the services and only keeping the related section for about and now we can also remove this section and here i'm changing the page title to about us and here we can decrease the font size for the inner page title so going to style tab and from typography i'm changing the font to 50 we can keep it and also in the bottom area of this section we can remove this spacing so for that from here going to advance and for top 150 and for bottom we can make it to same and also for this section going here from advance for the bottom padding i'm making it to zero so now it's equal spacing in top and bottom and also if i check the responsive view going to tablet here i'm going to decrease the font size so going to style tab and for here i'm making it to 30 or 35 and for phone we can keep it as it is and also for the spacing again i'm going to the tablet first and from here going to add fonts and for top and bottom first making it to unlink for top i'm adding 120 and for bottom 120 and similarly for the phone for top adding 100 and for bottom 100 looks good and now again going to the desktop view now for the content area we can keep the about section as it is and now i'm going to remove this read more button and here this is the details page so here we can keep the title small title and some details and here we may need to have some more text so for that i'm going to create another section and this time i'm taking it to the full width and for the section style going to copy and paste style and also going to copy the text and paste it here and here we can remove the, some padding for the top area so going here from advance i'm removing the top padding to zero and here we can also decrease some spacing so we can do it from the top section so for the top section from advance from bottom if i check we can make it to 50 okay so i'm making it to the zero and now if we need to add some more details about us we can add more text here for example i'm adding more text and here we can also increase our text and here if you need to add some more sections we can add any custom section and finally if i check the responsive view and again going to the tablet so it looks good on tablet and also for the phone looks good on phone also and here we can also decrease the spacing so again going to the second section and from advance for phone we can make the top padding to zero we can also decrease some spacing if we need for now i'm just leaving it as it is and going back to the desktop and save our page 
and finally going back to the view page all right so here is our about page and following the same process we can create others in our pages for our website now going for the service page and also again opening the about us with elementor and now from here we can save the banner area as page header now going to this top section so for that we can go from the navigator and going to the section and now from here right click and save as template we can save this section as page top and save and also we can save the whole page as page template so we can use it for others pages if needed so going to save as template and here i'm typing page and save now going to the service page and going to edit page going to edit with elementor and here first going to add template and going to my template here page top i'm going to insert this one and changing the page title to services and now for the second section we can take this section from the home page again so for now i'm saving this page and going to our home page we can crossing it and for here going to edit with elementor again now from the home page if i go to the service area and here we can save this section as template so going to save as template and saving it to the service then save it and also from here we can save the case study section so we can use it for another page going to save as template and case studies and save now going to my service page and first i'm going to refresh it then going to add template going to my template and going to insert the services and here for this section we can change the background color for the second one going to edit section from style tab and the background color you can make it black bg2 so now it's looking like this and now finally save our page now going back to the view page and next going to the case studies going to edit page and edit with elementor now going to add template my template and first going to insert the page top and then going to again here and case studies going to insert and here going to change the page title to case studies and now for this section we can remove the view all button and here we can add more item for case studies so simply we can duplicate this one and here we can add more project details if we have and here we can decrease the spacing between these two so going to edit column going to advance and for margin top i'm adding 10 or you can make it to 0 and also for padding making it to 0 and here we can make it more top so here i'm going to add minus 10 so the spacing between each item will be similar and finally checking the responsive view again going to tablet for this section from advanced we can make it to minus 10 or 0 and going for phone and for the second section for margin making it to unlink and top making minus 10 all right now saving our page and going back to the view page and here for each project we can create a single project page and then we can link the pages with each item for example i'm going to create another page for details project page so for that i'm going to edit page and here if i go to the all pages and from here if we want to duplicate any page in a quick time so for that we can 
install another plugin duplicate page or post so going to plugin and add new and now searching for duplicate post or duplicate page and now duplicate page I'm going to install this plugin and activate now if I again going to the pages and case studies I'm going to duplicate this one and now going to edit and page title I'm making it to project details one and here you can set the project details page as the parent page so going to page attribute and parent page I'm typing case studies and now going to publish now if I go with the edit with Elementor and here going to change the page title first and here we can remove the structure and here we can remove all others so now I'm going to change the text for this page now here we can take a two column structure so going again here going to inner section and now we can add a image on the right side and here we can type some product details so going here taking a image going to upload the image and now I'm making the width to 100% going to style tab and width making it to 100% and here we can add some border radius I'm adding 10 pixel or 25 and now for the left side we can add some text for example I'm going to copy this one making it to left align and from style tab we can change the font size we can make it to 30 and from advanced we can set the padding to 0 and in the similar way copy and paste and from advanced we can make the padding to 0 and setting the alignment to left and here we can add more text and finally here we can add some more details like here we can add live link we can add some more details about our project for example here I'm going to add a button and if I check the home page we can copy this button style and paste it here paste style and change the text to live link so now I'm going to save this page and going to view page and also if I go to the case studies now going to edit with Elementor if I go here and for example I'm going to add this page link with this first one so going to web design and here is the link option and here I'm going to copy this page link and paste it here now save it and here you can see as we added the link so it's showing the underline with the text so going to style tab for the first one and going to typography text decoration we can make it to none and finally save it in the similar way we can add link for other pages and we can also create different project page for each of our projects now going back to the view page so our case studies is done and next I'm going to the blog page and here in the similar way going to edit page and going to edit with Elementor now for this blog page design I'm going to import our page layout so going to add template and my template from here page I'm going to insert this one and now changing the page title to block and from here we can remove this left column and here making the text alignment to center and also from here making the alignment to center and from advanced going to again the custom CSS and here going to add the CSS selector and margin auto all right now I'm changing the text here I'm typing blog 
and also changing the text from here and now from here I'm deleting all this text and also from here removing it and here I'm taking the blog module so here I'm searching for blog or post I'm taking this widgets and here before styling this widgets we need to add some blog post from our post area so for now I'm just saving this page and now going to dashboard again going to in a new tab going to post and going to add new here we need to add our blog post title then here will be our description I'm typing and now here I'm going to add some dummy text for our blog post details for example I'm going to lorem if some website and going to copy some dummy text and now paste it here and here if we want to add any extra image or if we want to customize our text we can also do that for example for the first line if we want to make this bold or italic or if we want to add any link to any text just select that text and then here is the link option and here we can add any link with our text and here is options open in a new tab so if I make it on our link will open in a new tab and here if we want to add any image inside our post then here I'm going to click on this plus icon and from here if I type image so here we'll find a image module I'm going to media library and for example I'm taking this image and now from the right side we can add a style with our image we can make it as default or we can make it to the rounded shape alright so this is done and now going to post and here here is the options for category so we need to add a specific category for our blog post I'm going to create a new category name here I'm typing WordPress tutorial and add new category and in the similar way going to add some more category and also here is options for tags so we can add specific tags with our blog post for example here we can type WordPress press on enter and we can type more words so these tags will work for SEO for now I'm not going to add too much tag and then finally the featured image so this image will appear to our page or with our widgets so for this blog post I'm going to upload some new images and now I'm going to add this image with it and finally going to publish our post and now in the similar way I'm going to add some more blog post going to all post I have already installed the duplicate plugin so from here we can duplicate our first post and now I'm going to edit this one and going to edit our title and here we can add our own text own image and also going to the post and from category we can select a specific category for it and then from here going to change the image and finally going to publish all right and now going to add some more blog post in the similar way all right so I have created some more blog post in the similar way and now again going to the blog page and going to refresh and now we can see here is loaded some blog post and this is the default style now I'm going to customize this widgets going here and here is the default design classic we can change the another one to card or the another one full content I'm keeping the card and now from here we can set the column by default here will show the three column and post per page six then show image yes 
the layout we can set also the masonry layout for now i'm making it off then image size we can also change the image size and also here is some more options we can make our title off or on except off or on and here meta information by default here is showing the date and the comments we can showing it or we can make it off and also the separator between our meta information and here is the read mode text we can also change our read mode text from here i'm removing this arrow and also the batch so it's showing in top the category and the avatar is showing here i'm making it off then here is the query by default it's showing the latest post according to date from here we can also customize our post query we can set it by specific terms and then here we can type any specific category like if i type dv and here will show only post under dv i'm going back and here i'm going to show all post and also finally here is the options for pagination we can make it on from here so by default it's showing like this here is some more options we can also make it on load on click so there will be a load more button when i click on the load more more blog post will show for now i'm going to numbers and previous next so it's showing like this and here we can change the page limit we can change the next or previous text and also the alignment now going to customize the layout going to style tab and going to change our font color and also the background going to cart and from here background color i'm changing it to a dark color for example i'm selecting the bg2 and now making it to the more dark and now changing the text color to white so going to content and the color i'm making it to now white and from here going to excerpt text making it to white and also here is the read more text making it to the gray color now for the title text from here going to typography i'm selecting the font family to poppins and text decoration by default this is underlined i'm making it to none and font size making it to 22 and font weight making it to 400 or 500 all right looks good and then for this text going to excerpt adding the font family the same font family poppins and the font size adding 16 pixel or 15 then same for the read more text making the font family to 15 and here adding some letter spacing adding one pixel and we can remove the underlined text decoration making it to none and finally the meta text we can make it more smaller so going to meta and changing the typography we can set the font size to 14 or 12 making the font family to poppins and here we can decrease the spacing between each item so here is the spacing after the title we can make it to 10 and also the spacing after except making it to 10 and finally for the pagination from here going to pagination also changing the typography making the same font family and font size making it to 15 and changing the color in normal state i'm making it to the gray color and on hover making it to white and on active state also the white and here adding some spacing in top adding 
40 pixel in top and finally the batch so going to image and from here the batch position you can make it to the left or right and the background color I'm changing it to the black color you can keep it like that or here we can set it to any color finally save our page and going back to view page so our block page is done and now when I click on any single block page so by default it's showing like this for single blog post and now I'm going to customize the single blog post for that again I'm going to the dashboard and if I go to the templates and going to theme builder from here we will find the single post and going to add new single post I'm typing post and create template and for this page we can import any pre-made layout so here we'll find some pre-made layout for single block post for example I'm going to insert this one going to insert and now from here if I check this image this is the featured image so this will be the dynamic featured image it will work dynamically for each blog post and this is the post title this is also dynamic here is the post category post date and then here is the post content here is the text here is some social icon and also here is a subscription box and finally here is some related blog post we can remove the bottom area we don't need this part and now we can also customize the page design to making similar with our other pages so going to the header area and now going to edit on the right click going to navigator and here is the hero section and from here I'm changing the background color and going to style tab changing the background color for the first color we can make it to the black color and for the second one we can set the this red or we can set another black alright so looking like this and also for the bottom area we can set the dark color to match other pages or we can keep it like that for now and here I'm changing the text color so for this one going to style tab we can change the blue color to this red color or from here this red color and also in the similar way we can change all this blue to this red color alright we are done and from here we can remove this message box and here we can add more style or we can do more customization as per our need for now I'm just leaving it as it is and finally going to publish going to add condition all singular going here and from here I'm going to select the post only so here this page design will work for all post finally going to save and close and now if I go to our single blog post page and going to refresh alright so we can see our new design is working and here we can add some margin in bottom so from here or for the second section from advance we can add some margin bottom I'm adding 70 and now save it and refresh alright so now it's okay and also if I check the responsive view of this page going to the tablet so this is okay for tablet as we imported the pre-made layout so this is already ready for responsive view if I also check the phone view phone view is okay we can keep it alright so our single blog post page is done now I want to make a different layout for a specific category blog post for example from the 
blog page if i go to the single blog post for elementor category we will see a different header and also when i go to the post for dv category we can see a different layout for that from the post builder if i go back to the dashboard again i'm going to theme builder now going to the single post and from here going to add new the template type single post and here i'm typing post dv so this will work for single post from dv category now going to create template and going to my templates and here if you want to create a completely different layout we can create from here but here i'm going to import the previous one the post and then i will customize it a bit now here we can keep all as it is and only you can change the background color for the top area so for that going to navigator and for hero going to style tab and i'm changing the background color instead of gradient we can take a one color i'm changing the color to this purple color and now going to publish at condition it will work for all post and from here we can select specific categories post in categories and from here i'm searching dv category and select this one and now save and close now if i go to this dv category post we can see this new color header is showing here and also in the similar way if i go to the another one for example if i go to the elementor we can see here is showing a different color for this specific category so in the similar way we can create different kind of single post page design for a specific category if we want and now here it's showing the author name and author page url instead of the author name here i'm showing the post category name so going to edit post and going here here is showing the meta information so instead of author i'm going here type and changing it to terms and taxonomy to categories so here is showing the category name for this blog post and now i'm saving it now if i refresh our post and here is showing all category list for this blog post for example if i go to any specific category page from here so by default our post category page or post archive page looking like this so we also can customize this post category page for that i'm again going to the page builder going to dashboard going to theme builder and from here going to archive add new archive and typing post category and create template so for post archive page we can take any pre-made layout from here or if i go to my template or here we can create the exact same layout for our blog page for that i'm going to our blog page first and going to edit with elementor and now i'm saving this page as a template so going to here save as template and saving as blog all right now again going to our category page layout and for now i'm going to publish it at condition it will work for all archive or you can set it as post archive only now save and close and now again refreshing this page and now going to add template my template and here is block template going to insert so here this is our default block page layout and now we can make our page title to dynamic so for example going to this title and from here we will find dynamic text and from here i'm selecting the archive title and now if i save it and now if i refresh our category page sorry it's not showing so if i check again the page condition going to display condition and from here if i set it for all category page and now save and close and now again going to refresh all right so now our category page layout is showing here
now in the similar way going to making dynamic all others item of this page for example for this title going here and also making this one dynamic text making it to archive title and also for this blog post going here and scroll down here is query here will show only from the current category post so for that going to source and here select the current query and now if I save and now if I refresh now here is showing the category DV and for the blog post here is only showing all the posts from DV category and here if we want to customize this title text we can also do that for that going here again and for this text from the left side here is the icon click here and include context if I make it off and now saving it now refresh so here the category text is removed and only showing the category name and here we can add any extra text with this category name before or after so going here and again going here going to advance for example here I want to add a text all post of DV so going here and before I'm adding all posts of DV and now going to save it and now if I refresh so here is showing all posts of DV you need to add a spacing all right looks good and now in the similar way we can add any dynamic text inside our category page all right so this pages is done and next I'm going to our contact page in the similar way going to edit with Elementor or first need to go to the edit page and now going to edit with Elementor going to add template my templates and from here I'm going to select the page layout going to insert and now in the similar way changing the page title to contact us and here removing this extra text and here you can check any pre-made layout or pre-made section for the contact area so going to add template and going to blocks and here I'm searching for contact here if I scroll down for example I'm taking this one here is a form on the right side and left side here is some contact information and some social link I'm going to insert and here we can add our text style or background color for example for the first one I'm going to copy and for the second section I'm going to paste style and in the similar way I'm going to changing the font style I'm going to copy the title and also going to paste style similar as other fonts I'm going to copy and paste style and if I go to the bottom area so these are coming from social icons here is showing Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, YouTube and GitHub. So if I want to change any one, for example, for the Facebook, if we want to add our own link, we can add here. And here, if I want to remove any icon from here, for example, I want to remove the GitHub. And instead of this, I want to add a different one like Instagram. Going to search for icon Insta, taking this one and here we can add our link for Instagram and now on hover style it's showing the green color I want to change this color so going to style tab and going to icon hover and from here I'm changing this color to this red color and I want to decrease the spacing between the icons so going to icons and spacing we can make it smaller all right and now on the right side here is showing the form so going here this is the form which is coming from Elementor Pro by default here is showing the name email and message field if I want to add more field for example if I want to add the phone number going to add item and here text type type we can set it to tell and level I'm typing phone and also the placeholder is coming from placeholder and now I want to move it top and finally here is the submit button going here by default it's showing the send message we can change the button text 
and also the color on hover so for that going to style tab and going to buttons and here is the hover color i'm changing it to this red color sorry need to go to the hover and from here changing this color to red and now from the content area after submitting this form if i go to the actions after submit by default all form information will be redirected to our admin email address here is the email address by default this is my admin email address showing here we can add a different email address here if we need and also action after submit by default it's showing only the email and here if i want to link this form field with our mailchimp or any other email marketing tools we can also do that for example if i go to the plus icon and here we'll find some more options after submit if i select the mailchimp and we'll find a new tab mailchimp here going here and from here api key we can set from here custom api key or if i set it to the default and here is the integration settings if i click here it's a different page it's taking us to the elementor settings page and integration so from here we will find the mailchimp api key options we have to set our api key for mailchimp and then save it and after that we can set the specific audience for mailchimp account and in the similar way we can add more tools with our submit form and now i'm going to remove the top section from here and here we can add some bottom padding for this section so going to edit section from advanced i'm going to add padding bottom 80. all right so here we can add more sections like here we can add any google maps or we can add more information to our contact page for now i'm saving it and going to view page all right so our contact page is done now i'm going back to the home page again so we are almost done before completing this video i'm going to explain some more advanced and cool feature of elementor pro for that again i'm going to edit with elementor for the home page and here from the left side in the very top here is some basic widgets and then here is all widgets which is coming from elementor pro so we will find some more advanced widget for elementor for example here we will find the animated headline so instead of normal static headline we can use this animated headline i'm taking this one and now if i go here we can make this static text to this animated one so i'm going here and i'm going to copy all this text now going to here and here is before text i'm adding all this text here then in a crowd i'm moving it to the after text and here the stand out i'm moving this text to highlighted text and now by default it's showing the circle for this stand out text and from here we can change this shape to different type for example here is curly here is underline we can keep it and also here we will find another style the rotating text instead of text we can also add animation or typing effect or different kind of text effect with our normal text for now i'm going back to the highlighted text and now i'm going to customize our text style same as the top one so first going to add the gradient color for that here in the bottom area we can see the html tag i'm making it to the h2 and now going to the first one going to advance and scroll down from custom css i'm going to copy all the css and now again going to this text going to advance and scroll down going to custom css and adding all these css and also from style tab we have to remove this color to transparent so going to headline and text color i'm making it to transparent and also for animated text making it to transparent and for this shape we can also change this color going to shape and color we can make it to this red color and now going to change the font size so going to headline typography and making the font family same as this one and also going to add some padding 
from advance making it to unlink for top and bottom adding 120 and for left and right 150 all right and now from style tab here is the shape we can also change the shape width we can make it to 5 pixel so it's now more thinner or we can change this color to this light green color all right looks good and also going to remove the first one and now if i go to the advanced tab for all widgets we will get this advanced option motion effect so if i go here we can add some advanced animation with our widgets for example here is the mouse effect if i make it on here we will find two type of options one is 3d tilt and another is mouse track making the 3d tilt on we can also customize it so now when i hover over the text we can see it's moving very nicely and also here is the mouse track so our text will move with our mouse moving for now i'm making it off only keeping the 3d tilt and also we will find some more options like scrolling effect here is the sticky effect and finally the entrance animation so we can apply this effect all over the website for example the scrolling effect we can add any scrolling effect with any specific widget for example with this image if i go there and from advance then motion effect and scrolling effect if i make it on and here we will find tons of variations so for example the vertical scroll if i make it on and with the scrolling our image will move by vertically in the similar way we will find more options horizontal scroll transparency blur rotate and scale for now i'm making it off and also here is another options sticky so we can make any widgets completely sticky when you scroll down for example if i make any image for example this one if i make it sticky on top here is options in top and bottom if i make it top and when i scroll down we can see our image has been sticky on top area that's cool we can use this effect with any sidebar for inner pages for now i'm making it off and finally the entrance animation so when we load our web page for the first time with this animation our item will come for example for the first one going to advance and motion effect and entrance animation from here we can add different kind of animation with our item here i'm selecting the fade in and also for example for this image we can make it to move from left and this text will come from the right side so here i'm going to advance and motion effect and entrance animation we can make it to fade in right or fade in left and also for the right side text we can set it for the column for the right side and going to advance then motion effect and entrance animation fade in right yeah looks good and now if i save this page if i check the preview changes and when i scroll down cool so we can see this text and images is coming from left and right side and we can apply the same effect all over the website for each item and also here i have added some text box but here instead of adding this normal text box from builder we can also add animated flip box so if i scroll down or if i search here flip box and if we take it so we can see this is a nice rotating box so if you like to use this kind of animated box instead of this static box you can also use it and also if i check others pro widgets from here we can add more advanced feature here is the hotspot this is also a cool widget and here is the price list price table and also we will find testimonial carousel reviews carousel countdown and also here is loti element using this element we can create any kind of animated icon for now i'm not going through all these widgets one by one but i'm just showing you you can use any elements if you need so for now i'm removing this flip box and finally saving our page 
And finally, I'm going to show you another useful feature of Elementor Pro, the pop-up module. For that, I'm going to dashboard again. And from here, we will find the templates. And here is the pop-up. Now, going to add new pop-up and create template type pop-up and name your template. I'm typing subscription and create template. So here we will find different kind of pre-made layout for pop-up or we can create it from scratch. Using this pop-up feature, we can create subscription pop-up, login pop-up or any kind of offer or counter for specific offer or any kind of promotional feature. We can also create this kind of sticky social widgets in different places. For now, I'm just going to create a subscription form. For example, I'm going to insert this one and for now going to insert. Now I'm going to customize this layout. I want to make something similar with our homepage design. So for that, I'm going to remove the left column. And now from here going to add section and here going to add template. Going to my template and from here I'm going to add this page top. Going to insert. And now we can copy this text style, going to copy and paste it here, paste style and from here going to advance and removing padding for top I'm making it to 50 and for bottom I'm making it to 0 and for left and right adding 20 and also going to copy the section style and paste style going to remove the top section and now going to edit section from advance going to add some padding in bottom adding 50 and also changing this background color we can make it to 000 and also going to customize this form going here so this is the contact form which is coming from Elementor Pro which I already explained in the contact page so here from the action after submit from here we can add any email marketing tools for subscription purposes for now here is only the email field we can add mailchimp or any other email marketing tools here is the mailchimp option and we can set the mailchimp api from integration settings and then set the audience name from here and now i'm going to change the button color so going to style tab and now going to buttons changing the background color i'm making it to this red color and also the font going to change the text color to white and also changing the typography font weight to 400 and adding letter spacing one pixel all right looks good we can keep it like this and here we can decrease the font size going to style tab and changing the font size to 35 all right looks good and finally going to publish from here we will find some steps here is add condition so this pop-up will work for entire website or you can set any specific page from here then going to next and here we will find some more advanced option so how we'll trigger this pop-up here is on page load i'm making it on for now so this pop-up will show when our website or page will load first time and here is the on scroll effect so the pop-up will show after scrolling some distance then on scroll to element so it will show when you scroll to a specific element and here is on click option so we can set this pop-up with any buttons or any widgets when you click on any button or any image or anything the pop-up will show then after inactivity so when users will be inactivate after a long time or a certain time then this pop-up will show and on page exit intent so when user will go to cross the browser or going to cross the website that time this pop-up will show and finally the advanced rule so from here we can also set some advanced option for now i'm okay with the on page load option and going to next and save and close and now if i go to our main home page and refresh our page all right so you can see this pop-up is coming when we load our website that's cool 
So that's all for today. If you like this video, give this video a big thumbs up. Otherwise, you may not find this kind of valuable tutorial next time. And if you are new here, like to see my more upcoming videos, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And finally, if you like to work with me for any WordPress project, you can contact me through my website. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.